WFY, WKXO, and WIRV. Also brought to you by Bishop Small Engine Repair, the law office of Patrick O'Neill, Nuevo Vallarta, and the Richmond Raceway. Now let's go live to your host, Michael Watkins, Samantha Burford, and Dawson Rule. Good evening, everyone, and welcome in to the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. He's Dawson Rule. Michael Watkins here with you on another exciting Monday, Eclipse Monday here Ooh. in the state of Kentucky and across the nation. Dawson, kind of an interesting day and a big sports day because of the basketball game tonight. Obviously, a very busy weekend in sports, and we would be remin remiss or whatever the remiss, however that word is. Remiss. Remiss if we did not start the show with talking about John Calipari. We're going to get to that here in just a minute. We do have interviews later on in the show with uh, Coach Steve Roof from Madison Central, the head baseball coach, uh, Coach Sutton from the model baseball program. We'll hear from them about the first few weeks of the season for their baseball teams. Uh, we'll t look at the uh, bracket standings for our bracket challenge that we've been doing over the last few weeks. But again, we got to start the show with talking about John Calipari. Anybody that follows mm. you on Twitter knows your disdain for the now former Kentucky basketball mm. coach who was announced last night. He is finalizing a five-year deal to become the head coach at Arkansas. I saw around $10 million per year from the school, plus $5 million in the NIL money. Around $15 million a year to leave Kentucky and go to Arkansas. First off, Talk about your thoughts on the decision from Coach Cow to leave the program. Uh, it was a good timed one, I'll say this. And, and before we get into it, I think this will save his legacy at Kentucky. Him leaving now after and not dragging on any longer. Because if it got any uglier, I mean, if we brought him back in five or ten years, yeah. it may have not been pretty. But let him go coach at Arkansas, do what he has to do. Ten, fifteen years from now, they will bring him back to Rep Arena, and he will be met with round of applause, and people will remember the good times, the championship, 38-0. And then if you kept it going, though, another year or two, and you had more first-round exits, I don't know if that would have been possible. So uh, we'll, I'll remember him for the good times. It's a little sad, honestly. Yeah. I mean, he's all I've known uh, personally, and but it was time, and let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, the national championship is, you know, a decade ago now, 12 years since yeah. they won the national championship. And, you know, you look back, those first five or six years were just incredible. I mean, he really kind of put the program back on the map. It's taken a seat back. Uh, but, you know, college basketball has changed, obviously, with the NIL, with the transfer portal. We'll get to that, to that news here in just a few moments. But <coughs> it's just not the same kind of program that we're used to seeing or used to. But here's what I'll say about that. There's a lot of programs that aren't the same that they were around the time Kentucky was at the peak of its – uh, I guess, fandom, which, again, Kentucky fans are Always. so hard to please. Dawson Rule is very hard to please, ladies and gentlemen. I respect the best. And I have seen on social media, they wanted him gone for the last, even since he came out and did that interview with LAX18, one of our media partners here with WBON, and they did the interview with him and Mitch Barnhart, and you, you could tell that there was just, it just didn't feel right, I, mm -hmm. I don't think. What, what this decision last night tells me is that Cal was looking and once he found that next step, crazy to me that's in the SEC. That's going to make it very interesting. Yeah. But what I will say is, Dawson and other Kentucky fans, be careful what you wish for. Oh, no. Because, listen, I'm, I, I would almost guarantee that the program takes a step back now. I mean, but can you take a step back from, you know, 10, 12 losses a year and losing first round right at the I mean, what, what steps back do you take? Well, even, mean, even with uh, that, though, the program was still – talked about. I mean, yeah. you know, and I think a lot of that was because of Calipari with, you know, the media coverage, the buzz that he created, you know, the the this all the the Drakes, the LeBrons, all the folks that were involved with him making the program kind of what it is. Now, I've seen a lot of names. And you and Samantha sat here, I believe it was last week and talked about some of those names. Uh, you you whenever he said he was coming back, you have got to have a home run hire. If Hurley wins a national championship tonight, why would he leave UConn? Let's just go over some go of the Purdue. names. Why would he? Why would he leave UConn? He probably wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, you go back to back at UConn. They've got six now, which would be tied for third most all time. UConn is 100 percent of blue blood. I don't see him leaving. So let's hope Purdue wins yeah. tonight. That may put some thoughts in his head, but I think they will contact him first. 
even if he says no, they'll do it again and again until he's like, go, get away from me. Who's your dream candidate? Is it Hurley? Is that the guy you would want? I mean, yeah. You know, obviously my, my fandom, I, I was like you a few years ago. Back, you know, when they won the national championship, I wanted to go to State Street and celebrate, yeah, you know, yeah. like fans did. That's that. In the last few years, now my fandom is not what it used to be. But when it was at its highest peak for myself, Brad, I'm a big Celtics fan, big mm. NBA fan. Brad Stevens, who was at Butler around those same time that Calipari was winning championships and getting Kentucky to Final Fours, went to Boston, had a great run there. Now he's in the executive suite with the Boston Celtics as a fan and still a fan of Kentucky, just not as big as, a, as I once was. I, and a fan of the Celtics, would love to see Brad Stevens as the head coach at Kentucky. I personally... Just again, I'm not a huge college basketball fan, but with what Stevens did at Butler, with what he did at Boston in the NBA, I haven't seen a coach in my opinion. You know, there's, there's been some, I'm sure, but I just haven't seen one do as much with less as what Brad Stevens did. Mm -hmm. So if you could get, I think he would be really good at building a roster. He has shown that with what he's done in Boston. Plus, you put his, his coaching prowess there. I think it could be a huge. Uh, name and, and big benefit for the program to bring Brad Stevens in. There's other names out there. Jay Wright, Billy Donovan, I've heard. Rick Patino. Yes. How do you Pitino. feel about Rick Patino? I, bring him back. I, I don't like, see, that's the thing. I don't, I don't think a Jay Wright or a Patino or a Billy Donovan to me make as much sense as bringing in a younger guy, maybe even a Nate Oates. There's, yes. there's a lot of names out there, but those older guys, to me, you, I'm just not as big of a fan because the game has, like Billy Donovan, is he going to know how to use NIL? Same with Jay Wright. There's a reason he left he Villanova. Left. Uh, so, Rick Patino, I mean, how good is he going to be at using NIL? So, guys like that. Older, yeah, yeah. It's, to me, it's not as good of a fit as bringing in maybe a younger younger coach. My thing with Patino is he would be welcome back, but how long would he stick around before yeah. retirement? I think Kentucky not only is, needs a home run, they need someone who's going to stick around 10-something years yeah. like Cal did or kind of close to what Tubby did. you got to have a guy that's not going to be here for just a couple years and leave. Kentucky's not that kind of job. Nate Oates, of course, but I've seen some stuff earlier today on Twitter where uh, from a reliable source that had the early Arkansas news that Nate Oates probably is not going to get looked at because he doesn't have a good relationship yeah. with Barnhart with the, some of the stuff he's done. So I don't know. This is all speculation. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it's what I've heard. But I would love Oates. He's young. He knows yeah. analytics, NIL. I'd love it. Yeah, I think that there are some. There's a lot of big names out there. And Kentucky is obviously going to, I think this could be a, a, a search that takes a while. It could take maybe a, a few weeks mm -hmm. to a month, which that kind of puts them behind the eight ball. Hey, We're already yeah. seeing players enter the portal and exit the portal. We saw Tayshawn Comer, the EKU player, Evansville. leave. He's already got his new home with Evansville. So there are names. The uh, Bradshaw today Just, yep. announced he is going to enter the portal. So let's look at now, and I know, you've, you, know you've, you listen to Matt Jones a lot, and I'm sure that they've got opinions on the portal and everything. With Calipari leaving, is there any shot we keep any of these guys? Mm. To, to me, there might be a better chance now to keep Reed Shepard than if Cal had stayed. I don't know. I don't know what their relationship was. Uh. But there might be a better chance now to keep Reed Shepard. I think yeah. he's the guy. If you can keep him another year, build around him, then you've really got something. But how do you convince a guy that's supposed to be a top five pick in the NBA draft to not go to the NBA draft? I mean, draft? even guys like Fierro may not come back because he was kind of a cow guy yeah. brought in as a three-star. But, yeah, guys like DJ Wagner, they're gone. Uh, Edwards, of course, already. Reed might come back in with the commits coming in. Well, I think Travis Perry would stay because he's a Kentucky yeah. kid. But all those other guys, man, they're gone. And they may go to Arkansas. They may commit elsewhere or get out of it somehow. But, I mean, if you're a Kentucky fan, I think a lot of them are like, well, that's okay, because they're kind of tired of the yeah. one. I know I kind of was, and they want a coach who's going to maybe bring in a freshman or two, but transfer portal and go older, and that's just where college basketball is now. So I don't think that's a bad thing. Well, here's the thing, too, with the one-and-dones. Even if you bring in a high, prolific freshman, if they don't go to the NBA, they're not coming back to mm, Kentucky. Yep. You're, you're very, very rarely. Reed Shepard might be the the only case of where a freshman, a highly named freshman comes in and Red Reed really wasn't wasn't that. Like nobody expected him to have mm -hmm. the year he had and to be a projected top five lottery pick in the NBA draft. But very, very rarely are you gonna have a big name freshman come in and A them have success 
B, have that success and not go to the NBA. If they don't have success, then they're probably going to enter the portal. So you are very, very rarely going to have a freshman come here, a big-name guy, and stay more than one year for whatever reason. Whether they go to the draft or whether they go to the portal, it's just not going to happen. Probably 90% of the roster from this year, of course not a lot of them announced, but it's gone. Big yeah. Z's probably gone. Anyenso is probably gone. Some of these other guys are most likely gone, even the three stars that yeah. didn't get a lot of playing time. So I expect to see almost an entirely new roster next year. And, hey, that's what we needed with Cal gone. So I think fans are going to be okay with that. So we talked about some of the, the names that could potentially be there. When, when you look back at Calipari's round, let's talk about first the most disappointing mm. season. Is there, the, is there one year that you look back on as a Kentucky fan and be like, Man, that is the most disappointing season or team or moment in the Calipari era. Easily 38 and 1. Yeah. Because that's probably never going to happen again. I mean, Gonzaga got close, but that was during the COVID year, and they only won 32 games. So it wasn't a full year for them. They didn't have crowds. I mean, the SEC was just starting to get good. It's much better now. Yeah. I don't know how you don't finish the job. So that was. That was, that was kind of when, not the full start of when Cal was starting to trickle off, but that set something off, and he never got back to a Final Four, and that was almost nine, ten years ago. I think that, so I, mean, I think this year could, could be could, could be labeled <laughs> yeah, as, that as well, yeah. because there was a lot of pressure on him to win. You've got all these, again, highly touted freshmen, plus a Mitchell and a Reeves coming back. So I think this year could be, if not, I mean, I think everybody would probably say it that year. The, this year is probably right behind it yeah. as far as disappointing because of the expectations set going into the year, a lot of disappointment last year. So I think that is why this year is kind of right behind the undefeated team that didn't go undefeated because of everything that happened this season. And now, obviously, with Cal leaving, it looks even worse, I think, this year mm -hmm. because he didn't get the job done, and now he's kind of bailing on the job. And reports said that he was kind of looking at jobs in February. And if you can remember, that was when Kentucky around then had lost three straight yeah. or up. It never happened. So it seems like he kind of had a foot out of the door. But maybe he thought, well, I've got a good team. We'll make a run. He did say built for March and then lose to yeah. Oakland. So who knows what was going on behind the scenes. We'll probably find out. But it's been a crazy last kind of 24 hours. And the search begins. Other than the championship, obviously, mm, great yep. moment there. What's oh, yeah. the most exciting moment or the one thing you might – look back on and be like, man, that was that was so much fun. Uh, I'll give it to the 2017 team that had Fox, Monk, Dominique, my Bam. favorite player, Bam. Because if they had not lost in that buzzer beater to Carolina, they were going to win the title that year. And I just loved everyone on that team, yeah. top to bottom. Derek Willis, hometown guy. Hawkins was awesome that year as a senior. Fox and Monk, bam, you know how good they did. So that would probably be my favorite memory besides the championship. To me, it was actually a, a team and a game that I went to. I went to the year when James Young was a freshman. Mm. I went to the SEC championship game that year and watched them lose to Florida in the SEC championship, make that deep run with Harrison knocking down all the clutch shots in that awesome. tournament. To me, that's the most magical moment outside of winning the championship was that team, the Cinderella run that they had as an eighth seed, and they can get all the way to the championship game. To me, that will be, the, I think, the most um, most magical or most memorable moments from Calipari's tenure. And there were a lot of them. There were a lot of good awesome. times. The last three or four years, the, the bad it's taste bad. in Kentucky fans' mouth, obviously leading to the big news that broke last night that John Calipari is leaving Kentucky, finalizing a five-year deal uh, to go to Arkansas. And now I think, Dawson, the next question is for, for Calipari himself, where does his legacy go from here? Do you think that him leaving Kentucky the way that he did, do you think that kind of puts a stain on what he did at Kentucky and on his legacy? I don't think it does. I think it's going to help in the long run. For now, everyone's still going to have that sour taste. And next year when he comes to Rupp, it's going to be the boo burns yeah. out. And, every, and I, if I'm there, I'll probably be doing the same thing. But no one, I, I love Calipari for what he did. And like I said, earlier, five to ten years from now, when they bring him back and he's retired, yeah. everyone's going to love him because he won the title, did all these great things, brought in all these good players. Temporarily, it's not going to help much. But long term, his legacy will go down, I think, great at UK. And I think it's going to go down good for him ending coaching, too, because if he goes down to Arkansas, they may not win a title, but he's not going to have the pressure. He'll have yeah. a little bit. 
No, I bet you he makes the Final Four down yeah. there. I bet you he does. Well, it'll be interesting for sure, and I don't think it, it affects him either as far as his legacy goes because fans wanted him gone. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. if they were begging him to stay and he's like, no, I'm leaving, or if maybe he'd went to Louisville, Ooh, or maybe he went to yeah. Duke or Carolina, like a, a rival, I think it, it might have made it worse. But fans wanted him gone. He kind of leaves on his own power. Yeah. I think it's a big move for Calipari, a good move for the program. But what I will say, yet again, Kentucky fans... <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. We'll continue covering this story as it develops and see who the next coach is coming in to coach the program. Step aside for our first commercial break here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. When we come back, the model head baseball coach, Coach Sutton, Coach Roof from the Madison Central baseball team. We'll hear from both of them. And we'll wrap up the show later on with the look at the bracket challenge we've been doing here with WBON TV and our media partner, 100.7 The Coyote. We'll look at that later on in the show as well. We'll be right back, folks. This is the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Whether you're looking for dependability in the game or on the road, Madison County is where you'll find it. Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond has the trucks you can depend on and a winning tradition just like our great local sports teams. Come see us at Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond or check us out at jackburford.com to see our lineup of dependable trucks and become part of the winning tradition. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer. And in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cup Cadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shandala, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see ya. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best fajitas in town. Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-666-2990. When the possibility for severe weather is a threat, it pays to have an expert on your side. Kentucky Roof Works and Restoration want you to know that your home is their top priority. When the storms have left you with more questions than answers, Kentucky Roof Works and Restoration is there to walk you through the process and offer free roof inspections and estimates. From wind and hail, fire and smoke damage, commercial and residential, just Kentucky Roof Works and Restoration. Like them on Facebook to learn more. We're back here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Dawson Rule, Michael Watkins. Glad to have you along with us on this Eclipse Monday. The Eclipse is here. Dawson is covering mm. Kentucky right now yeah. and kind of making its way through the state. And I've seen some different things. Are you, are you worried about the Eclipse at all? I know in 2017, I remember being outside with Grin and some of the other staff here and looking up at it with their glasses on. I know the schools gave out glasses to the kids today when they were leaving. So it's a big deal to uh, kind of have the Eclipse and a very interesting story here locally we've got to cover. I don't think anything bad's going to happen. I just think it's one of those cool things that yeah. just happens in the, the nature of, of life. And, hey, we get to enjoy it for a couple minutes and... With, I think the next one's 20 years from now, so don't miss out or you're going to be much older when you see the next one. So, so keep looking because I bet it's still up there somewhere. Yeah, and we talked about uh, you know baseball. There's a big game today going on right now. The model yeah. baseball team taking on Lincoln County, that game going on over at EKU. A great place to watch a game, even if it's a baseball game for a high school team. And model taking on Lincoln County right now. The Patriots off to a great start this year. 12-2. and two. I mean, they had a really good start last year. 
This year, again, really hot start, and they don't look to be cooling off anytime soon. The bats are hot right now for model, and I mean, they could really be a contender in this district. Yeah, eight straight wins. They've scored double digits in the last six of those eight wins. They are, as you said, the bats are hot right now. Had a no-hitter in the Berea game, and you talked to Coach Sutton earlier today about his team, and obviously off to a great start. Big game tonight, and I think uh, over the next couple of weeks, we'll really find out how good this model team is. Yeah, it'll be tough for them not to knock off Lincoln County. We'll see a little bit later this evening, of course, as the game's going on, but I mean, they have a a favorable schedule. Teams they've beaten before in the yep. past, they still have to play. They beat Berea last week. They beat them 10 nothing. threw a no-hitter in the game, yep. actually. So I'm really pumped to see where this team goes throughout the month of April and May. Let's hear from Coach Sutton as he talks about the first few weeks of the season for his team, some of the players that have stepped up big for the Patriots, and they look ahead to the game tonight. Welcome in, everybody. Uh, Dawson Little here with Coach Sutton from Model Baseball Team. And, man, the team is off to a great start this year what is it 12 and 2 now 12 and 2 yep and and it's been an incredible start last year was a really good year yeah. this year really good start like i said kind of talk us through the schedule so far getting to 12 and 2 mm -hmm. some of the teams you've played and what you've seen from the team so far yeah um, you know last around this time last year I, we came in here and we talked about just kind of turning around the program and, and and how that's been and i couldn't be more proud of our guys you know last year was such a kind of just learning how to do everything the right way and so there were bumps uh, uh, in, the, in the road and and I felt like we lost some games last year that we had no business losing but that's part of it and you know that was the whole message this off season is hey we're not going to have those games this year you know if someone's going to beat us they're going to be better than us we can't be beating ourselves. and and I'm really proud of the the preparation that they've put in this year and uh, like you said 12 and 2 to start and you know those that includes some big wins over um, our rival Berea and had a good uh, comeback win against Bluegrass United and, and, and just and just multiple wins, you know. Um, we have a big one tonight against Lincoln County uh, at EKU. So if, I don't know if it's going to get out there before oh, it, or not. It will. Okay. So after you watch this, go out to yeah. Eastern and, and watch Model take on Lincoln County. Yes, sir. So um, I believe that, you know, this is one of, if not the best, start in, in Model, you know, baseball program history. So hopefully we can, can, can continue that. And, um, Again, I'm just proud of our guys of how they've handled it. And obviously, you know, to get off to a great start, you have to have good preparation. Talk about the off season, get, yeah. hitting the weight room, yeah. and, and getting guys mentally prepared for the season during the winter. Yeah, um, you know, we'd never really, they really didn't even know how what the how the how the weight room worked and and everything else. And I remember you saw us in June, yep. and you were like, "Man, you guys are already center. out here at the rec center." Yep. And so EKU's been real generous with us about that kind of stuff. And yeah, we started. Started going to the weight room, at, uh, I want to say early June, all the way throughout the summer. Um, I was going to let them take the summer, play summer baseball, whatever, and, and they came to me like, hey, coach, we want to start now. Like, we want to get ready to go. So I was real happy to hear that. And so, yeah, we had, we have, we've had lifting since all the way through the summer. We lift every morning at 6 a.m. over at the rec. Um, we had fall hitting, fall throwing program, had our winning hitting, uh, hitting program, and all the way up into to um, season prep, you know, January, February, and we've pretty much going, been going year round, just a lot of voluntary stuff, obviously, um, but that's what you need out of your players if you want to be a real program, and that's what I told them, hey, if you want this to be a real program, then we need to do all these things, you know, you guys need to take it this serious, because everybody else is, those teams that you're going to play in the district tournament, regional tournament, stuff like that, they're taking it serious like this, so if you guys want to be a part of that, this is what we need to do. And they've answered the call, and and we've been there since June, so I'm proud of them. Well, they sounds like they've been buying in, and, and a yeah. smaller school like Model with yeah. players that maybe have not seen the winning success at other schools. See, how right. do you get them to believe that hey, we can do this? Right. I think first of all, it starts with seeing W's. You know, it, it, we talked about it again last year. They had seen so much losing in their career that now some of these younger guys that have been playing. You know, last year I started two eighth graders. I started a few freshmen this year. They've only seen winning a lot, you know, so some of these older guys, they know both sides of it. And, um, you know, I, I it was, we joked about it, but Connor Sayre, he's he's one of my only two seniors. And and uh, we were watching a game the other day. We weren't even playing in it. And just one of the, one of these teams were just playing, you know, very bad little things that just kills you, you know. And I said, could you imagine being like being like this? And he was like, coach, that that was us like a long time ago. You know, he's like, so I'm, I'm so happy we're not that anymore. Um, but yeah, I think it just takes one believing in yourself 
two, putting in the work for it. And once you put in work, you know, it's just like taking a test. When you're, when you're prepped for it, you're ready to go. When you go in there just hoping, you know, it's not going to work out most of the time. So I think they've prepped themselves the right way, and, and now they're reaping the rewards for it. Do you feel like there's a buzz around model? Like the school in yeah. general about the baseball team with the winning, you said it's not really been seen a lot. And, and that can go with some other sports, you know, rebuilding phases right, 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 right. now. Do you feel like there's a buzz with the baseball team, just more people coming out, watching, yeah, or deciding? Um, I would, I would sure hope so. You know, obviously I don't get too much into it, but I, I've tried my hardest on it. You know, when we got our spirit pack stuff, I made sure to get, you know, the principal, the AD, all, all kinds of stuff, model baseball gear, and and I want that to be the buzz, you know. Um, a lot of our guys, I kind of made it mandatory, like, hey, we're all going to watch the soccer game tonight. Hey, we're going to go watch the basketball game tonight because I think it's very important for peers to support peers and coaches to support uh, coaches. And, and especially model being a small school, you know, it is – it is a little community, so mm-hmm. uh, the more everybody can support each other, um, I think that's the best. And and you talked about you know not not a ton of success and everything. You know, one of my good friends, Alex Shapiro, he he had it rolling when he was here, and and they won a district championship, and and I, we talk about it all the time. One of the guys on my staff, Taylor Hill, he was on that team for Coach Shapiro, and and we just talked back to that 17 team of how they did certain things and how we need to get back to that. But a lot of these kids, you know, they're not they're not that old. They don't mm-hmm. truly remember it that much. So, again, just getting back to those points and, and getting to be respectable is, is where we need to be. Yeah, and I feel like you've done a good job so far. And how hard was it coming in last year, <clears throat> excuse me, building from, I don't want to say nothing, but uh, you have a good baseball knowledge, but not taking a lot and then only a year and a half in getting all these W's. I mean, yeah. how hard was that for you, and, and what did you do to get to this point? Yeah, I mean, it was it was very hard. Um, I've grown up in the 11th region. Um, I played at Scott County. We, we won a lot of games there, so it was very hard for me. I was very used to winning and, and coming into a program that wasn't used to that. I don't, I don't know exactly how to say it, but it, it was very difficult. And, again, it, it went back to the very first thing of just you got to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then then – how are we ever going to win, you know? Um, but I think it just started with a standard, like, you know, just little things. Hey, we're going to run on and off the field. Hey, you know, we're going to play every pitch the way that it needs to be played. We're going to compete. We're not going to lay down. You know, just little things like that to where in single-A baseball, if you can just be coached the right way and you do everything the right way, the little things the right way, you're going to win a lot of your games that, you, you know, you might not. We talk all the time. If you can make routine look routine, you can throw strikes, and you're good in situational hitting, you're going to win 85 90% of your games. Um, so if we can just focus on those things and being the more mentally tough team, we're going to be fine. And I think they've really bought into that, and, and I hope that I'd wear off on them about being mentally tough. And I think you know that, that's kind of become our MO is, hey, it pays to win. We're going to be mentally tough, and, and we're, going to, you know, we're going to come out on top of this, you know. Well, give some love to your team. Obviously, you know, baseball, you've got a lot of guys that play in and out in, in different positions, but highlight some of your top guys this yeah. year, and, and, and I don't want to call them the hardest workers because everyone on the team right. is important, but maybe maybe your lineup, you know, yeah. top to bottom with one through nine. Well, obviously it starts with Beckett Parker Noblet. I mean, the guy's just awesome, yes. you know. Um, love him to death. He's a, he's a great kid, great player. Um, you know, in baseball, we talk all the time, it's you go three out of ten, you're in, you're in the Hall of Fame, you know. Every time Beckett gets up there, if he gets out, I'm like, Beckett, what are we doing? You know, as much as that's not, you know, reality, it just seems like he gets on every time. You know, he's, he's, he's a great player. Um, Connor Sayre, like I said, he's one of our two seniors. He's a great leader for us. He just kind of does everything. He's kind of Mr. Utility. Um, wherever I need him, he's going to be there. If I put him in the two hole, he's ready to go. If I put him in the seven hole, he's ready to go. You know, he, he doesn't complain. Um, Aaron Short was battling a knee injury earlier in the year, so he's he was usually our, our everyday third baseman, our guy on the mound, and he hasn't really been that fully yet this year, but I just feel that he's, he's right there and he's about to break through, um, especially as he gets healthy. Uh, Matthew Gorbett has been great for us on the mound. You saw him at, right, at Berea. Um, and, he's, and he's hit a lot more this year, you know, which was surprising for us, and, and he's done a great job. Uh, Garrett Hallway started last year as an eighth grader. So did Kellen Burchett. Um, Kellen's pretty much been our everyday uh, catcher. Uh, Garrett plays pretty much everywhere in the infield for us. Tyler Short didn't play last year. That's Aaron's older brother. He's our other senior. Um, he plays left field a lot. 
has a cannon for an arm. You know, he's he's been a great addition. Mark Thomas Ellis, just kind of your does everything for you in right field. He'll do anything you ask, run through a wall. Um, Case Caldwell, he's a freshman, new to the team this year, and he's played a good first base for us, DH a lot. Um, Caden Wade, he's also a new addition. He's been playing a great center field. Um, he can hit the same thing, two hole, five hole, nine hole, whatever you want him to do, lead off, he's going to lay down bunts, he's going to steal bases, he's going to catch everything in the outfield. Um, Isaiah Kirby's been good for us on the mound. You know, I could go on and on, but our team, I think that's the main thing about our team is our team. You know, it's not really one guy or, hey, we're doing this. Like, I think Nathan pointed out to me the other day that everybody in our starting lineup is hitting above 320, really? which is pretty insane, that, you know. That is very good, um, yeah. And that's kind of just, I think that's the preparation they put in, the hard work they put in all off season. I mean, when you hit, you pretty much hit and lift for a year straight, you ought to put in, mm -hmm. you know, the work for it. And uh, and they've just been great for us. You know, it's never one through nine, uh, which I didn't always feel that way last year, you know, of can we be, be successful one through nine? You know, do I need to do this? Do we need to bunt here? Do I need to hit and run here? Whatever it may be. Now this year, pretty much one through nine, and even a few guys off the bench, I feel very confident in that at any moment, you can put a ball in the gap for us, and we can. I have so many options over there with the guys we have this year, and and I, again, I think the best thing about our team is the team. Kind of to, to wrap this up, what would you say to fans who maybe haven't been out to a game yet, mm -hmm. and you still got a whole month of April and May before oh, yeah. district start to get out and support y'all? Because twelve and two is no joke, and y'all yeah. have a lot more games to come and a lot more winnable games to come. Oh yeah, um, we play an exciting brand of baseball. Uh, we're going to do everything the right way. Um, Again, sprint on and off the field, play hard, throw strikes, have emotion within the game, but play it. In it th we play it the right way, though. I think you know you, you respect the game, respect your opponent, but never back down. And and again, I think our guys did a great job of supporting all year of other sports, and we would love to have other other uh, peers and teammates and and teachers and everything else come and support. And uh, we would love that. And like he said. Plenty of more home games this year, and it's going to be beautiful weather. And if you can make it out, we'd greatly appreciate it because we're trying to do things that have never been done at Model. Yeah, and you guys had a student station there tonight for the Berea right. baseball game. They were going crazy doing yep. YMCA and everything. And that's awesome. Good night. I love to see that. And and anytime students can support students, you know, there, there's nothing better than that. I remember when I was in high school in basketball, like, I, I loved being in the student section. You get to support your best friends in the world of what they do. and. And you don't really see that in baseball, so I'm very uh, uh, grateful and appreciative of that. And I hope we have it every game, you know. So, again, keep supporting, and and uh, we'll do our best for you guys. Uh, we hope to be out to another game soon, and, and it's been a great year. Congratulations so far what you've done. Job's not done yet, no, obviously. No, no. Still right. got a whole lot more baseball to go, but yep. doing big things for model, Coach Sutton. Yes, Thanks sir. for coming in Thank today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Folks, we'll be right back after the break. If you want to go out, Lincoln County model tonight. Game's probably already started by the time you're seeing this, but it's still going to be a good one, so get out there to EKU's baseball field and support. We'll be right back. Whether you're looking for dependability in the game or on the road, Madison County is where you'll find it. Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond has the trucks you can depend on and a winning tradition just like our great local sports teams. Come see us at Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond or check us out at jackburford.com to see our lineup of dependable trucks and become part of the winning tradition. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer. And in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Esco County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cupcadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shandala, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service. A place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best fajitas in town. 
Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-666-2990. When the possibility for severe weather is a threat, it pays to have an expert on your side. Kentucky Roof Works and Restoration want you to know that your home is their top priority. When the storms have left you with more questions than answers, Kentucky Roof Works and Restoration is there to walk you through the process and offer free roof inspections and estimates. From wind and hail, fire and smoke damage, commercial and residential, just Kentucky Roof Works and Restoration. Like them on Facebook to learn more. We're back here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Dawson Rule, Michael Watkins here with you on a Monday. Special thanks to all of our great sponsors like Jack Burford Chevrolet. Be sure to go check them out online at jackburford.com. See the latest inventory and as that tax money starts to come in, be sure to take it over to Jack Burford Chevrolet. It'd be a great down payment on a new vehicle or maybe one of those used cars on the lot as well as Jack Burford Chevrolet does a great job of promoting their vehicles on their Facebook page as well. So go over there and check them out. Dawson, also special thanks to Bishop Small Engine Repair. Mowing season is here. I've got my yard mowed a couple of times. And it's, uh, it, you know, there's nothing like putting your headphones in, mm. putting some 90s country on, and, and mowing the grass. Mowing. Well, I, I typically like to put on Morgan Wallen, but he's kind of in trouble right now. So <laughs> he don't is. Want to talk about yeah, that. You don't want to get into him. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think, you know, uh, getting go over to Bishop Small Engine Repair here in Richmond on North, uh, North, North, North Estill Avenue. Yeah. And check them out. they got some great deals over there right now with the mowing season now upon us. Also, a special thanks to the law office of Patrick O'Neill. Give Patrick a call at 606-666-2990 for a free consultation. You can give him a call today with uh, questions about workers' compensation criminal defense cases. If you know somebody that's in trouble, they need a great lawyer. Patrick O'Neill serves all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. Got a great reputation uh, and he he will do everything he can to help you and your family out. So give him a call today, 606-666-2990 or like the Law Office of Patrick O'Neill on Facebook. How about Nuevo Vallarta? A great place to yep. grab lunch or dinner. Take the family over there. Uh, tons of fun, entertainment while you're there as well. The great serving staff at Nuevo right here on Big Hill Avenue. And uh, there's no better Mexican place around, in my opinion, Dawson. Oh, and I like Mexican food. And, uh, we go to Nuevo all the time. Yeah, we We're do. probably going to go later this yeah. week at some point. And it's, it's the best. Go out there and try it. Uh, let's look ahead to some of the exciting moments uh, to, you know, or some of the exciting things we've looked at the first few weeks of baseball and softball season. We know about the big win for Madison Southern. Got the season started off with that win over Madison Center, but they're kind of coming back to the field now. They've lost three straight games while they were on their trip to Myrtle Beach. Now the Eagles kind of struggling to find their bats. However, for Central, their baseball team now 8-1 and one in their last nine. Had a great trip to down in Florida where they played some really good baseball teams and picked up some nice wins while they were on their spring break trip. Yeah, uh, start off first. Southern, I think they lost to a couple out-of-state teams on that spring break trip, so maybe they were struggling a little bit there but yeah central has taken off since that early season struggled the first game against southern and i think they're they're a good team they're just it took them a while to get started and build and let's see what they can do they've got some big ones upcoming as well this week let's hear from the head baseball coach of madison central steve roof about the way his team has played over the first few weeks and here with madison central head baseball coach steve roof and coach just got back from your spring break trip with your team and you've been doing this trip for a long time before we talk about how things kind of went this year for you guys let's talk about this trip and you know kind of the idea behind it building team chemistry and and maybe how you've seen the trip kind of grow and expand since you first started doing it back in the day well you're exactly right It's, it's just a trip to bring us together and it really starts with that bus ride in the morning and we like with the social media, we like to take a lot of pictures uh, from that, that first Saturday kind of sets the tone. We stopped several places. We actually were going to go watch Alabama, South Carolina, had tickets, but traffic kind of got in the way. We weren't able to make it, but um, it was still a fun day, uh, play some cornhole and eight. Just, just being together, I think it's really important for a team. 
Well, you had a, a good trip down there this year. Went four and one. Uh, the, the loss to Taylor County, lost by one run. Uh, had a few uh, mercy rule wins during that trip as well. Talk about maybe what you saw from your guys as you've really started to kind of pick up some wins over the last couple of weeks as well. I'll tell you what I saw. I saw a lot of leadership from our seniors. Uh, it, that's really where that trip starts. They uh, they kind of took over or took the lead, and, and we were always up on time. You know, a lot of times on those trips, it's about getting to bed, getting up early. You know, two of those games are morning games. Getting them up at 6 a.m. on a spring break trip is more like a business trip, and we kind of look at it that way. And uh, they did just did a great job leading us. And so the leadership kind of rolled over to the play. And uh, I just think people pulling for each other. Uh, some of the hitters, found, you know, stepping up. I think just seeing more pitches and playing more is always is a plus. But in the, in the weather, practicing some. So it was really more of a, a team effort. The, I thought the pitchers did a great job on the mound. Our defense has been solid all year. And it just kind of it, – it, it, it was a good week. So it kind of sets you up for the, next, for the rest of the season. Now, and now, talk about you know when you when you do this trip, it, you know you you play games obviously, but it's not just about playing games. And this is one thing that I've loved about you and your program for for since I've been able to you know to be a part of covering you all is the things outside of the game itself. You know whether it's you know riding uh, go karts or just having dinner with the team and just kind of bonding. And that, that's one thing that you've I mean I think you've kind of perfected with just how you do and how you run your team. So talk about that and and just some of the ideas that go in to not just the baseball aspect of it, but the behind-the-scenes stuff that maybe many people don't see? Well, I don't know about perfected yet, but we're always working to make it better, and we can always improve in areas. But you're right. Like, we go one night to the track. A lot of times we stop at David Buster's on the way down. One of our sayings is kind of work hard, play hard. So even in the weight room or when we're doing things, we, we try to have fun as well. It's okay to work really hard at your craft and then have fun. And really the spring break trip is kind of a reward for all the things that people do throughout the year. So um, we we do believe (laughs) just like, you know, when you eat together or just the more time you spend together, you start to care about each other. We build relationships. You know, one of the things we like to do, we take the cell phones up at night. So uh, it kind of forces some communication and and just just trying to bond. I don't know if it's the end-all, be-all, but it's definitely something that we do that does kind of bring us together. But I think it's proven all it's things that we do all year. It's just kind of a kind of that last big project. Kind of because we get back now, we got in the meat of our season, five or six weeks left to go. So hopefully you're coming together at the right time. When you look at, at your team itself, uh, it seems like you know you've got you talked about the leadership and you got guys like Keith Stewart and Parker Mullins and other guys that have been around this program that have kind of gone through these trips, gone through the you know the grind of getting ready for the season. Uh, and they've kind of started off the season very well. You know, Keith's hitting 342, Parker's playing well. But you've had other guys step up as well. Just you know, highlight some of the guys that have, have started the season off very well, whether it be at the plate. And also you've got guys like Elijah, uh, Sam, that are pitching very well at the start of the season as well. Yeah, I think he definitely starts on the mound. And when we get a good performance on the mound, like Metcalf down in Florida, I think seven innings, I don't have any of the stats in front of me. I beat a good Anderson County team. Uh, Sam Coleman pitched really good against a ranked Muhlenberg. But it, it just keeps going. I thought Lana Brados came off the bench and threw really well. Uh, even Griff Lyons, he threw really well against West Chessman before we went down. So it just starts with guys on the mound, you know, accepting the role. Seth Barker, call him the golfer, who's won a couple state titles in golf. <laughs> he, he's pitched really well as well. So the pitching is where it starts and then the defense. And at the plate, you know, it's hard just to single out one guy. I thought each one. You know, had a day doing something, whether it be get a drag bunt down or a couple big hits here or there. Um, it's just embracing that role, too. Another thing we like to do about essentials, we try to play a, a lot of different lineups early just to kind of see where we're at and give different guys a, a shot. So, you know, what, they also embrace a tough schedule, which is what you're going to see the rest of the way. We need to see as many good arms as we can because the 11th region is loaded. Yeah. They're loaded with upper-level talent, especially on the mound. So we try to schedule that way to see those teams to get us ready for the end. Now, you know, when you look back on, you know, the last five, ten years, there's been some big names come through your programs. You've obviously had some really good teams. When you look at this team, is there something that maybe sticks out about the team as a whole, whether it be, you know, a, a, a lot of deep guy, you got some, you know, a deep bench or you've got a lot of guys you can rely on, maybe it's a deeper pitching staff. Is there something about this team that kind of makes them stick out to you? I def- definitely think there's a deep pitching staff uh, and that the defense has been plus. 
the, the, the hitting has come and go, but that's really all years. Uh, even when you look back on some of the years that we won the region, it was really we got hot at the end. And it's just about playing a tough schedule, 36 games, to get really ready for it, a, a game or two that can go either way. And uh, as you look through the years, I always say we can't control where that ball lands. Even last year against Scott County, they hit a double down the line that was fouled by six inches in the seventh inning. If it goes fair, they might have scored two runs and won that game. So you just have to do all the things that you can control on your end. That's work hard. You know, it's attack the zone. It's play great catch, quality at bats when you're up at the plate. And just and then the results will just kind of happen. You cannot control the outcome a lot of times in baseball. You can actually play well and lose, and you can actually play bad and win. And baseball is kind of that one sport where that ball sometimes will just fall in or not. So we understand that. So let's play a really tough schedule, work hard. But, yeah, this this team is loaded, I mean, you know, deep on the mound with some really top-end arms, great defensively, and then the hitting is, is working together as a group. You talked Hopefully to, that translates in the end to a regional championship. Well, you talked about the region as a whole and how difficult it is. You, you've now weather pending. We know the weather's kind of looking crazy this week, but you've got Dunbar, Sayer, Tates Creek, Lafayette, Frederick Douglas. You're going to get a chance to see some of those 11th region teams over the next couple of weeks. And when you play teams like that, what what's the game plan? Do you do you want to th- throw your ace, or you know, what's the game plan when you play a team like that? I think we just we line our pitching up, and sometimes it just kind of falls as it may. Okay, you know, we want to get those guys going once a week. But you're right. So even this week, looking ahead, there's some rain. So you, if you lose Wednesday, then you might bounce a guy to Thursday, Friday, and that's probably the most challenging part is getting your pitching staff lined up for weeks at the end and, and, and when we get towards in may then you definitely want to throw guys to be ready for like that first monday when the district you know you want your ace to yeah. win on those mondays or the weekend so you know the plan is it's always to try to compete and win the game obviously but um just like i said to play the best teams you can just to prepare for the for the end and sometimes in a loss you can learn something nobody likes that and nobody wants to lose but um you can you know when you when you fail you do learn so, and that that's an important part of the process as well. So, talking more or looking more at the schedule next Monday, a week from today, it's Blake Crow night. Uh, you know, Blake Crow was a great player at Estill County, went on to play and have a great career at Berea College. And you'll be playing Estill County next Monday at Berea College. And I think this is, uh, you said, the third year that you all have done this. We've been able to kind of stream the game the last couple of years. But it's always, and, and last year was a great game. High, a lot of runs scored. Uh, to talk about, you know, Blake Crow Knight and, and the idea behind honoring a, a kid or a, a young man that was taken from us way too soon. Well, as a coach, uh, you know, just total respect for the way he ran his program. A lot of, you know, a lot of relations go back and forth. Uh, had some family members here to play for us that knew the family well. I know his dad really well. And we just wanted to have a, a chance to honor him. Uh, coach Hess is the AD at Berea, and he just said, hey, kind of reached out to him, let's play back at Berea. They named a locker room after him. Mm-hmm. So it's something that we're going to try to do every year as long as we can. Uh, again, both of us at both programs try to teach our kids that there's, it's bigger than baseball. So both after both games, we've come together, and the, and the father has been able to kind of tell that story. Like, baseball is going to end at some point. Uh, pulling for each other, having relationships, and just general care for other people is something we both try to teach our kids. So – you know, baseball is a great avenue to, as we see it, to get really to teach life lessons. And this is just one of those nights. Well, Coach, always a pleasure talking to you. I know it's a busy time for you guys as you kind of get back in the swing and things and, and getting back home and, and uh, kind of getting your own field ready for some games this week as well. Good luck the rest of the way. We'll be talking to you soon. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get out there for a game or two this week, barring the weather. Well, we appreciate your coverage and everything you do. Thank you. We'll see you soon. dependability in the game or on the road, Madison County is where you'll find it. Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond has the trucks you can depend on and a winning tradition just like our great local sports teams. Come see us at Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond or check us out at jackburford.com to see our lineup of dependable trucks and become part of the winning tradition. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer, and in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. 
Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cup Cadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shandala, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 Northwest Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best fajitas in town. Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-666-2990. When the possibility for severe weather is a threat, it pays to have an expert on your side. Kentucky Roof Works and Restoration want you to know that your home is their top priority. When the storms have left you with more questions than answers, Kentucky Roof Works and Restoration is there to walk you through the process and offer free roof inspections and estimates. From wind and hail, fire and smoke damage, commercial and residential, just Kentucky Roof Works and Restoration. Like them on Facebook to learn more. We're back here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Dawson Rule, Michael Watkins here with you folks. Know Samantha Burford, second week in a row. And, mm. you know, Samantha, we love giving her a hard time. I'm going to be nice to her, though. She said she's been busy. Had a spring break trip last week. Got her facial, got her feet done. Mm. Sure, got her nails hey. cleared up. Yeah, you know, it, it takes Samantha a couple of weeks. they got to get her pr pretty enough to keep up with me and you. You don't take us, we just wake up and we look pretty. Samantha's got yeah. to have a couple of weeks where the procedure's done, get her feet cleared out, and then she's good she to go. She had the cucumbers on her <laughs> eyes and everything. You had know. the robe on, you with know. The fan, the, with the, what the guacamole they put on her face. She's got yeah, all that some stuff. Some grapes. So. Any more grapes for you? <laughs> oh, I hope she sees this yeah. and, and will give us a hard time for it. But, yeah, it's been a couple of busy weeks here for us. So we had Kenyatta Harge on the show last mm. week. Uh, and before we kind of get into the big game tonight, we do want to remind everybody we're getting super close to Suits for Seniors Ooh, yeah. and the big event taking place over at Chenault Vineyards for EKU football. So be sure to, uh, you know, be sure to kind of get your tickets now. Get ready for that. Going to be a big event there with EKU football. And Dawson here this week, you and I are going to stop by EKU football practice and uh, look at some of the things going on there with Coach Wells and the team. And the spring practice always fun. Get your first look at the Colonels football team, which should be very good this year. I'm hoping they can be because I want them to win the UAC and excited to see the regeneration of this team. Maybe get a glimpse of who the quarterback yeah, is. Yeah, that'll be I good too. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for Eastern football. Well, it's it's basketball season still yes, for the moment here collegiately. And tonight we'll wrap up the college basketball season with Connecticut and Purdue playing in the national championship game. The two, two of the one seeds making it all the way to the championship game. And that's who I predicted in the mm. championship game. So part yep. of our Coyote Bracket Challenge, we looked at, or we did our bracket challenge a few weeks ago while you were on your spring break trip. Samantha and I did our brackets. You did your bracket as well. I'm not going to say where you're at or where oh. Samantha's at. However, if UConn wins tonight, your boy takes home that big TV. I'm pretty excited about it. I mean... We kind of need UConn to lose for a couple different reasons. We, I now, don't. You so, need UConn yeah. to lose. Well, but. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, that Purdue can win. But if UConn wins, it's well deserved, yeah. and you will well deserve out of hundreds of people yeah. somehow win first place and, and a prize or something. Yeah, the, that's the uh, that's that's the big and that's it's fun. You know, listen the the and you can't listen. If I win, it'll be very interesting because you know we've never had anybody from the company win the challenge before. What are the and odds of that? It's exactly. I mean, look, everybody got a chance to fill their bracket out. Some people picked Kentucky to win. Not going to say any names. 
Uh, I had Kentucky in my Final Four, but what helped me was I had the other three teams in the Final Four. Obviously, now I had Connecticut and Purdue in the championship game with Connecticut winning. Now, there is a couple of names. I know our guy John Mark Stivers mm -hmm. uh, has got Connecticut winning as well. Uh, there was a couple of ladies down the line a little bit. If Purdue wins tonight, I think they might have a shot to surpass me. So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. But it's going to be a lot of fun tonight with the bracket challenge wrapping up. We'll look at that on your sports segment tomorrow and let you know who wins. And, of course, you can listen to 100.7 The Coyote on the mornings and in the afternoons with Tom and Matt. And they'll kind of run down the uh, final standings of the Coyote Bracket Challenge. You can go to WCYOFM.com tomorrow once the uh, game is done tonight. And I'll have the updated standings for you there on WCYOFM.com. What you got tonight? You got UConn, Purdue. What do you think? Uh, I mean... Heart, our head says UConn, Heart says Purdue, because I don't want UConn to catch closer to Kentucky. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing, that. folks. If, if we trust Dawson, who did you say was going to win the whole thing first when the whole thing started? Cat, baby. After Kentucky was out, who did you say was going to win? Uh, who did I say? Well, I mean, you've been on there. You've been riding the train oh, for NC two. There we NC go. State. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, let's just they you were know close. what. Who, I, I need you to say that. I want you to say Purdue is going to win. I need this TV. So, so look into the camera right now and say <laughs> Purdue is going to win. So Purdue I can, is going to win. Let's go, baby. Go ahead and give me that TV. I, I'm, I, I appreciate it. Zach Eady will foul out. Oh, well, uh, it's going to be hard if they don't call no fouls on him. But I think yeah. I think he could struggle with the size that you and the athleticism that UConn has. Burns was not. Burns, Burns had no shot. I mean, he held his own. Own, but yeah, I mean, NC State couldn't hit anything, and they still, for the most part, kind of hung around to the end. That kind of turned into a blowout. But yeah. man, we got to give respect to Purdue. They've been March Madness early exits for years. Finally got to the title game. They're going to play good tonight. I have no doubt. UConn, a very good team. They'll play good as well. And I'm excited because you know everyone's like parody in college basketball. Yeah, there's parody, but at the end of the year, the two best teams. Yeah make it to the championship, and we'll see who wins it. Yeah, I think this game could be very, very good. Yeah. You know, I think it could be, a, like, maybe one of the best college. This game could be reminiscent of the Villanova-UNC game from a few mm. years. Oh, yeah. That went, you know, with the guy winning, the Chris Jenkins hitting yep. the, the game-winning shot. This could be that type of game where it's just back and forth, both teams kind of counteracting or counterpunching the other team's punch. Could be a very, very fun game tonight. UConn-Purdue, I'm going to say UConn wins 70, no, I'm going to say 68 to 62. I think it'll be a close game. You come by six. Did they cover the spread? I mean, what is the spread? I don't know, well, you but know they've covered look. the spread. They have. Every game. They've won every game by double digits, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Now, let's look it up real quick. We'll, it's incredible. Oh, uh, UConn by seven. Really? So my six-point win does not cover the spread. Six and a half is what the line is right so now. Seven. So seven, okay. Yeah, so I don't have them covering the spread. I think they win 68-62 mm. is the final. Uh, unfortunately, I have to be realistic for once as a Cats fan. UConn will win. Okay. They will catch up one more closer title to Kentucky, and they will also cover the spread. And then Dan Hurley does Hurley goes to Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, so, folks, thanks for joining us here tonight on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Thanks to all of our great sponsors, our great guest, Coach Steve Rue from Madison Central and uh, Coach Sutton from Model. As of right now, we're looking at maybe doing the Central Breathitt County baseball game on Thursday. There's also a Central softball, softball game Wednesday and Thursday as well, so those are options. However, we're going to kind of play it by ear with the weather that's coming in. Rain could possibly play a big factor in what games we're able to do, if any, this week. We will let you know what our schedule looks like. Be sure to stay tuned in to the WBON TV Facebook page and watch Dawson Sports Report for those updates. For our producer, Copeland Peterson, he's Dawson Rule. I'm Michael Watkins. No show next Monday. It's Blake Cronite over as Estill County and Madison Central Baseball play next Monday. We'll be there for that one. Thanks for watching, folks. The World Poker Tour coming up next here on WBON TV. Whether you're looking for dependability in the game or on the road, Madison County is where you'll find it. Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond has the trucks you can depend on and a winning tradition just like our great local sports teams. Come see us at Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond or check us out at jackburford.com to see our lineup of dependable trucks and become part of the winning tradition. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer, and in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. 
With a full line of products from Cupcadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shandawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 Northwest Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best fajitas in town. Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-666-2990.